Hey, Shabbat Shalom family. Thank you for uh, making it to another Sabbath class. All praise to the Most High Ahia. I'm able to sit before you and uh, bring forth this lesson. And I uh, pray to the Most High that uh, edification and understanding is brought forth. Tonight's title of the lesson is Precepts and the Commandments. Once again, tonight's title is Precepts and the Commandments. And I picked this title because I mean, I think maybe some of us don't understand exactly what a precept is. We, uh, we think it's uh, linking the scriptures up, you know, together, and that is so. But um, the word precept, it has a special meaning. And to get this meaning, we're going to uh, go to the Strong's Concordance. And uh, for those of you who have one, open it up now. And we're going to go to Hebrews number 4, 6, 8, 7. Once again, that's Hebrews number 4, 6, 8, 7. And this is the Hebrew word for a precept. The Hebrew word is uh, mitzvah. I'm sorry, sorry if I pronounced it wrong, but... Uh, the Hebrew number 4687, uh, it's from Hebrew uh, word 6680, a command, whether human or divine, collectively the law, which was commanded, commandment, law, ordinance, precept. And so this is what a precept is. Uh, the Phoenician pronunciation is Matazawa. And so it says a divine or human law or command. And it says collectively the law. And so all the precepts together, they make up the law. Because the Bible from Genesis 1 1 to the end of Revelations, it's all the law. And law is something that that must be done or must come to pass. And everything in this book will come to pass. So the reason why we're sticking our precepts in particular is because the law should have a very special meaning to us. And so we're going to go through a few scriptures uh, about that meaning. We're going to be going um, a lot through Psalms 119. I'm going to say this right now. Everyone should read Psalms 119, the entire chapter. On your, in your free time, do it tomorrow when you, when you have some time to rest. We're going to go through quite a few precepts in there. But uh, first we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9 and 10. Once again, that's the book of Isaiah chapter 28 and start at verse 9. This is Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. And so we go over the scripture a lot. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And I hope um, for those of you who have been following us for a little while now, you understand it's it's those who are humble. Those are like little babies. You know, that's uh, that's who was just drawn from the breast. A two, maybe three-year-old child really doesn't know a lot about the world, but it's gonna soak everything up like a sponge. Um, I don't know if a lot of you guys know this, but between the ages of two and five, you do more learning in that period of time than any other time of your lifetime. And it's actually a, a really good age to teach. I know um, I heard someone on the line talking about um, learning, teaching the kids Hebrew. Between that little age range, it's a perfect place to teach your child a language, uh, an art, an uh, instrument, and especially the law. Because by the time they're five years old, you know, they're talking, they're walking, you know, and they have some type of comprehension. So pick that time, you know, when they're weaned from the breast, to give them a true doctrine. Can you continue? 
verse 10. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And so we're going to cover all these tonight. It says precept upon precept, divine command upon divine command. And it's important that we look at it these in this manner, not just, oh, we linking this scripture up with this scripture up. No. This is what the Most High has commanded. And all his commands have to line up. It works that way even in our own law, in the, in the worldly law. You know, laws that cannot contradict each other or else they become void. All right, so um, let's go on a slot here. And so we're going we're gonna to do some precept upon precept. We're going to do some line upon line. And we're going to do it here a little, there a little, because like I told us in the scripture before, this is how we get understanding. So uh, we're going to go to the book of Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 13 through 14. Once again, it's the book of Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 13 through 14. This is the book of Nehemiah. Chapter 9, verse 13. Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai, and spakest with them from heaven, and gavest them right judgments, and true laws, good statutes, and commandments. These are the true laws. And these are the only ones. And he says he came down to give them right judgments. So when we're talking to people about us following the law and they make it seem like it's this evil thing, remember, the Most High came down, or it's like he sent Christ down onto Mount Sinai to relay this information to Moses. And I, I highly doubt that the Most High was wasting his time in telling us all these things. And these are good statutes. These are good commandments. So remember, the law is good. You're doing a good thing by following the law. And don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Continue. Verse 15. And gavest them bread from heaven for their hunger. And brought us... Oh, sorry about this. Excuse me. Verse 14. And made us known unto them thy holy Sabbath, and commandest them precepts, statutes, and laws. By the hand of Moses, thy servant. And so Moses, I gave him something very special. He gave him the Sabbath, this day, right here. All right, it says thy holy Sabbath. That means that that separate day of rest. All right, and he gave us precepts, statutes, and laws. All right, he gave us these commands. He gave us these little nuances of these commands. And, he, and laws and precepts, you know, that's, those words go hand in hand. And he sent them through his service, Moses. And just like now today, he set up teachers to give these things back to the people, give the Sabbath back to the people, give the precepts, the statutes, and the laws back in the, to the people. Because these are all good things which were stolen from us. And then not only were they stolen from us, they were hidden from us through the guise of Christianity. And so, like I said before, we're going to see what the law should mean to us. And the Psalms 119, it's a very long chapter in Psalms, but it's also a very powerful chapter just to give you an overall feeling and orientation of what the law really means and what it can do for us. And so we're going to go to the book of Psalms, chapter 119. And we're going to start at verse 4. Once again, the Psalms. Psalms. Go ahead, Doc. Right, this is Psalms chapter 119, verse 4. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. And so where do we see this? We see this in Deuteronomy chapter 28. It says, uh, if thou shalt hearten to do all these things, I will... Uh, I will set thee high above all nations. But also says, choose this day, life or death. And so he's commanded us to do all these things. 
And so um, you guys are going to have to keep up because we're just going to be going down some, we're going to be going down line upon line in Psalms. Okay, so I'll go down to 27. Verse 27. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. And this is David here, um, for those of you who don't know. And Psalms or songs? These are actually all songs that David wrote, the brother could sing. And so he's, he's asking the Most High, you know, make me to understand these things because some people know this law. You know, we have other camps out there that have this law, but they don't understand the spirit of it, you know. And so David's asking and petitioning to the Most High, you know, make me understand these things so I can speak of all the wonderful things you've done, and it'll be, it'll be righteous and truth, you know, not where's your beard at, where are your fringes at, uh, you know, uh, you're unclean, you need to stay over there, you know, and this and that. Because there's, you, can, you can have the law and just completely misunderstand it and, and miss the mark. Uh, let's go down to verse 63. Verse 63. I am a companion of all them that fear thee and of them that, that keep thy precepts. And what does that sound like? That sounds like something Christ said, right? Sounds like, uh, <laughs> let's go there real quick. Hold your, hold your spot in Psalms 119 and go over to Matthew chapter 15, verse 20. Because people should remember, you know, and when you're talking to people, always remind them, Christ didn't have no New Testament. He wasn't reading Matthews about himself saying he said all these things. Continue. This is St. Matthew, chapter 15, verse 20. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Oh, sorry, yes, sorry, yes. That's uh, the wrong piece there. Hold on. One moment, family. I need uh, my, bro my mother, my brother, my sister. One moment. It's blocking it. It's, uh, it's uh, Matthew 12 and 50. You have to excuse my dyslexia. <laughs> Once again, family, that's the book of Matthew, chapter 12 and 50. And this is linking up of uh, Psalms 119 and 63. St. Matthew chapter 12, verse 50. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Okay. And so here's some of the here little, there little. Christ is actually talking about something, well, he already knew, something they wouldn't have been able to read in the Old Testament. This is 119.63 says, I am the companion of all them that fear thee. We know the people that fear the Most High are the ones that do his commandments. And of them that keep thy precepts, his laws. And so uh, let's go back to 119. And we're going to go down to verse 87. Remember what we're trying to get here. We're trying to get a, a sense of what the law should mean, mean to us. Psalms, chapter 119, verse 87. They had almost consumed me upon earth, but I forsook not thy precepts. And so by keeping this law, we actually protect ourselves from certain things that could happen. I'm not saying you're going to escape everything because there's going to be persecution that comes from the law. But things that are unnecessary for us to go through, by keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, we hold ourselves from those things. Let's go down to uh, 93. Verse 93. I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast quickened me. Yeah, the word quickened, um, 
I don't know if you guys have ever seen that movie, The Highlander, uh, where, uh, you know, when they're immortals and um, they're trying to get down to one immortal. And when he killed another immortal, immortal, he gained all that knowledge and information. So quickening is like a, a rapid gaining of information. And this is why we should never forget the law. Because I know for most people on this phone, the more we keep the law and the more we stay with the Most High and love the Most High, the more things he reveals to us. Most of us learn more than when we start keeping our law, the law of the Most High, than all the time we have been alive in the Christian church. So always remember that. Always keep the law in your mind, close to your heart. Let's go to uh, 100. Psalm chapter 119, verse 100. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. So um, let's say in ancient, it literally means, you know, the people that came before you. You're, you're used to be pastors. You're used to be elders. You know, at this point now, you understand more than them because you're able to know the precepts. You know the divine commands. And you know that Everything in the scriptures have to line up with the divine commands. Let's go to 128. This is Psalm chapter 119, verse 128. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. He says, I hate every false way, because if it doesn't line up with the precepts, it's wrong, point blank. And the law is not silent on much. There's very, very few things the law is silent on. And he says, the law gives us the understanding of all things right. So if we stick with the law, we know we're right. As long as, as, long as we're using the law righteously, because um, Paul talks about that. The law is righteous when used righteously. You know, uh, you can't use the law to put someone in bondage or binds or to put more on someone than they're able to do at that moment. It's not our place to use the law in that manner. But if we're using it to uplift people and to keep ourselves on that narrow path, then we know it to be right. We're going to grab uh, one more scripture in 119. We're going to go down to verse 168. Verse 168, I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. Hmm. What does this one sound like? We're going to do some here a little, there a little now. Let's go hold your place. And, um, you don't have to hold 119. We're going to go over to Revelations, chapter 14, verse 12. Once again, it's the book of Revelations, chapter 14. Verse 12. Revelations chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are, the, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Yeshia. So this is exactly what... We heard in Psalms that the, the faith in the Most High and keeping his commandments. This is important. The Bible is actually repeating itself over and over again. And once you understand the precepts, then it finally clicks. There's so much that we can actually understand from the virgin birth to, to the law on on uh, the dietary law. There's so much more we understand through the precepts, and we have to hold to this. But then with the precepts and following the precepts comes opposition, right? So let's go to Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Because some people will say that by following the Most High's divine commandments, that, that we're wrong, that we're actually sinning. But we know the precepts teach us not how to sin, and that the precepts teach us what sin is. 
Once again, that's the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 1. Romans, chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So should we, um, should we continue in sin? And we all, we all know what sin is. If you don't know what sin is, it's 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Sin is transgression of the law. So should we, com- should we continue to break the divine commandments? Should we continue to break the precepts because we got grace now? God forbid. No. How shall, we, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Exactly. All right. The Hebrew word for, word for no is la'ah. How could us who are being dead to sin, and we're talking about being dead to sin here, this is what we're baptized into we're baptized into the death and so how can we us being dead to sin or dead to breaking the precepts and the commandments live anymore inside that yet you'll have christians saying well curse is he that doesn't do everything that's in that law and they use the they use the scripture completely out of context because they don't understand the precepts. They don't understand that they're actually condemning themselves. The scriptures tell us you'll be justified or condemned by what comes out of your own mouth. Cursed is every man who doesn't continue in all these things. But because they don't understand the precepts, the divine commandments, they don't understand the the scriptures. Because we all know on this phone, as long as we continue to break the Most High's law, as long as this nation continues to break the Most High law, these curses shall surely t- overtake us. And so remember that and take solace in that. Because you understand the precepts and the commands, you'll hate every false way. You'll know more than the ancients. And you'll protect yourself from unneeded sadness and sorrow and chastisement. Let's go over to Romans chapter 6, verse 14. Once again, that's Romans chapter 6, verse 14. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Oh, this is the Christian's favorite scripture right here, especially when they're talking to, I'm not under the law, I'm under grace. And so what is he talking about here? Read 15. Verse 15. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. So even in that statement, even if they're saying they're not under the law, they're under grace, because they don't understand the precepts, because they don't understand the divine commands, they don't understand that they still have to follow these things. Let's see what the law is that we're actually free from, because this is a very easy scripture to combat once you understand the precepts. Let's go to the book of Romans. I'm just going to go two chapters over to chapter 8. I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. Once again, it's the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. Romans, chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yeshua Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, the word condemnation means, is another word for judgment. Uh, We understand that judgment is the execution of the punishments of the law. This is what Paul is saying there, all right? No one's got to get killed who's under Christ, all right? 
who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And if you're walking in the spirit, you're not going to, you're not going to break the law. But continue. Verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Yeshua has made me free from the law of sin and death. This is the law that we're free from. The law where if one of y'all wasn't on the phone tonight, we, we'd round everyone up and look to go stone you tomorrow. The law that will keep some of the women on this conference call from being able to attend during their, their time of the month. The law that if we have disobedient children who won't listen will allow us to throw them off a cliff. <laughs> this is the law that we're free from. The law of, of punishment, of death. But because they don't understand the precepts, because they don't understand the divine commands and what it, and what it really is, they miss the point. They don't understand that by worshiping on a Sunday, they're worthy of death. That when they go out Saturday for the shopping sprees or Black Friday, you know, they pick that day on up for a reason, <laughs> to have all our people profaning the Sabbath, running over each other. They don't understand these things because they don't understand the divine commands. They don't understand the precepts. Let's move along. We're going to go over to the book of Matthews, chapter 6, verse 24. Once again, the book of Matthews, chapter 6, verse 24. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. We have, there's only two masters on this earth. Understand that. I know there's many other gods, but all the other gods work for one guy. And then we have our God, Ahia, Ashar Ahia. And so you got two options, right? You have life or death. You have law or lawlessness. You have the Most High, Ahia, and his son, Yeshia, or you have Satan and his minions. These are the only options that we have. There's a very clear line in the sand. You see this illustration when we're in the wilderness with Moses. The most I told him, hey, draw a line in the sand. All right. That line was the, the, the law right there. If you're not on the right side of the law, you're going to get swallowed up. Those who, who had some sense about them stood with Moses. The others, the earth opened up and took them away. But because Christians don't understand the precepts, these divine commands, they miss the point. They think that, oh, the scripture is just talking about money. It's not just talking about money. It's talking about how we should be operating. <laughs> it's talking about what the Father has laid down and whether we're going to follow it or not. Let's move over to 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 21. And it's not hard. You know, we can go over the scriptures all night. Some of them we go over constantly. 1 John 5 and 3, for this is the love of the Most High, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Yet people will tell us, oh, there's no way you can keep all those laws. Not understanding what grace actually is. I had a was talking to someone about keeping the law, and so they brought up they brought up some valid points. They're like, "Well, well, what if you have to work on Sunday, or or do you ever work on the Sabbath, or do you wear these fringes, or what about when the women can't come at the time, or the women's can't women can't come in the temple because they're unclean?" 
you know, and I tried to understand, uh, explain to her, like, this is what the grace is for. It's not for us to intentionally go out and ignore every divine precept that was ever laid out. It's for these times where we're behind enemy lines. I can't get no, you know, I, I probably could, but it's hard to get 100% cotton or 100% wool. And even if this, even if I'm getting 100% cotton, I can't even guarantee that's real God-made cotton, how he intended it to be. It's probably some genetically modified cotton. So even then, probably still breaking that law. But the most I knows where we're at, he knows our position, and this is where he extends us to grace. Not for us to continually to ignore him and, and ignore the fourth commandment and say, hey, I don't, I don't care what the Bible says. I'm going to worship on Sunday, and I know you all heard people say that. I know you have. We've all heard, well, well I don't care what the Bible says. We're going to celebrate Christmas. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to hear that as more and more as the weeks, the day approaches, as they get more and more in that spirit. Or it doesn't matter. Well, since when does what the Most High says don't matter? I mean, has he said it and it will not come to pass? <laughs> or did he change? I mean, maybe we should just ignore Malachi 3.6 where it says, I am the most high. I change not. Maybe he really did send Yeshia down to tell everybody, you know, all that stuff that I told Moses. I, I came here face to face with him, wrote it down on the rock. Forget all that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. No, I don't think so, though, because I understand the precepts and the commands. These divine ordinances <laughs> uttered from the mouth of the Son of the Most High, Yeshia, who's always been the intercessor between the Most High and us. So once again, I'm going to read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21. Ye cannot drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. I'm going to take you guys, uh, we're not going to go to these scriptures, but I'm going to take you guys back to when we are in the wilderness the first time. And Moses went up on the mount. We read in Nehemiah that Christ came down and delivered the good, the good judgments and the statutes and the laws. But then what did the people do? They were down there making an idol out of gold, and praising it as if it was God, like if they were doing the right thing. Because those, those people didn't think they were doing anything wrong. They thought they were doing what was right. But the Most High wasn't having it. Just like these people who are going to be celebrating this pagan holiday coming up, the Most High is not having it. He don't care if it has Christ's name in the title. It has nothing to do with him. And just like that golden calf that they were calling Lord <laughs> had nothing to do with him, neither does this day coming up. You know, people say, oh, well, God knows my heart. Yeah, that is deceitfully wicked above all things. Who can know it? I mean, certainly we can't know it, but the most I know is our hearts. <laughs> and he knows that most of us, I pray the most high, not the people on this line, but most people out there just want to do what they want to do. Damn what the most high said. <laughs> it gets to the point where some people would, they don't even want you to open up the Bible because they'll be exposed. But that's all right as long as you understand these precepts and these commandments. Let's go over to the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. It's a very familiar scripture. It's one of Christian's favorite scriptures. It's also one of Hebrew's favorite scriptures. But here we have the understanding of what these scriptures are talking about because we understand the precepts. Matthew 
say Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Now, here's where understanding God's commandments, the Most High's commandments, is crucial. Just in this first scripture alone, what was Christ coming to fulfill? An atonement for sins, right? Because we had a day, you say the year, where we would go and regardless of what we was doing, if it was fornicating, sorcery, breaking the Sabbath, we knew that we could uh, atone for our sins this one day. Most I got fed up with that, stopped accepting the sacrifices. And so what Christ came to fulfill was an atonement for sin for us, Israel. You know, it's, it's madness that in the church that they say, you know, not only is the law done away with, but, oh, well, that's the Old Testament. Well, if you get rid of the prophets, Christ was never going to show up. If you get rid of the law... Christ had no reason to be here. They don't understand by they don't understand they're ignoring their own salvation by shunning these things. But if we understand the precepts and the commands, if we understand that there are certain holy days that we had, one of them being the Day of Atonement, which is one of the holy days which we're commanded to assemble together all the men of Israel, one of the three times of the year, so we make an atonement for all our sins. They would understand that this is what Christ was here fulfilling, also fulfilling all the obligations of the other laws, the moral, the civil, the dietary. But this is what Christ came to fulfill. It's our atonement, Israel's atonement, and only he could do it. But you're only going to get that understanding through the precept, through the commandments. The scriptures um, you see about uh, Lazarus and the and the rich man, and he wants you know he wants Abraham in Abraham's bosom to send Lazarus over to uh, put some water on his tongue. You know, Abraham explains, no, I can't do that. There's a chasm there. But then he proceeds on to ask, well, well then send Lazarus to my to my father's house. You know, I have brothers. You know, and if if they would see someone from raised from the dead, they would repent and they will you know and avoid this place. But Abraham says something that's very profound. He says, they have Moses. Let them hear him. For if they won't hear Moses, neither will they believe though someone be raised from the dead. And we all know who was raised from the dead, Yeshia. But if they don't want to listen to what Moses has to say, there's no way for them to repent. There's no way for them to believe in what Yeshia was here to do. There's no way for them to understand it because they want to ignore the precepts, the divine God-given commandments of the Most High. And so the whole testimony of Christ is just lost in the melee because they want to ignore a piece of the book, something they think is too hard. We know it ain't hard to keep the Sabbath. Everyone on this line looks forward to the Sabbath, probably more so than they look forward to their Sunday. On Sunday, they all got to get dressed, and they, you know, they, mom got to go get the kids together. They, they got to be looking right in their Sunday best. They got to, they got to travel, you know, come to church, make appearances. It's a big old ordeal. Well, they don't understand. This is a day of rest. I'm supposed to just relax, give some time to the Most High. And enjoy the rest as he enjoyed the rest. But it's all lost because they don't understand the precepts. Continue. Say Matthew chapter 5 verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. I'm tired of explaining this scripture. This scripture is self-explanatory. It's saying, look up, look down. 
the law stands, just like you stand on the earth. <laughs> but this next chapter, this next verse, is pointing directly at the Christian church, directly at them. Continue. Verse 19, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So not only do they break the laws, they teach everyone else to break the laws. And I praise the Most High that, you know, I had an elder who gave me correct understanding on the scripture. The least of the kingdom means you're not in the kingdom. <laughs> All right. It might, it might appear that you might have made it just by the skin of your teeth. No. You're without. You're a dog, a liar, a whoremonger, a sorcerer. <laughs> and that's what's, that's, the church is prevalent with that. Maybe some of y'all don't know this. The church is the church is prevalent with witches, people who are in all kinds of mysticism and other theologies outside of the body, outside of the Bible. Because, but because they don't want to understand the precepts that the Bible says don't don't make this of any other book, and be admonished at the making of many books. And, and they were saying much study makes uh, makes us, uh, us weary of the flesh. It's talking about learning about all these other ideologies. Because I almost gave up studying all this madness. The Anunnaki, the, uh, the, the Zayt guys, the Bible, the, the Tao, all this stuff. I almost just gave up on everything. I was just going to say, I'm just going to go back into the world and do my thing and whatever. This is too much. But thank the Most High for the precepts. <laughs> Let's go over to the book of Matthew. Oh, before, before we leave here. It says, But whosoever shall do and teach them. The people giving these lessons on the line, we're not the only teachers of this body. You're all expected to be teachers so that most high willing one day we all could be called great. The harvest is plenty and the laborers are few. But you're all expected to pass the message on. Whatever whatever your understanding is, as long as it's lining up, as long as we're of one body, one spirit, and one mind. But we're all expected to do and teach. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. Once again, it's the book of Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. Say Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? What's the most important thing to do? That's what he's asking them. If I don't do nothing else, Yeshaya, Master, what what should I do? Continue. Yeshaya said unto him, Thou shalt love the Most High power with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Mm Mm-hmm. This is the first and great commandment. This is the great commandment. This is what we're supposed to be doing. This is the most important thing. He has a very specific question. Yeshua gave him a very specific answer. He said, love the Lord thy power, love Ahia thy power, with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, with everything you got. Until you drop, till you till you fall out dead somewhere. But what's the love of the Most High? And let's go over, and, and everyone should know this one. If you don't, you're going to learn right now again. And you'll probably hear the scripture every single night that we're on the phone. 
Because a lot of those are coming out of these abominable houses, and we were never taught how to love the Most High. We were just told to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that the other name is Lord and came and, and died for my sins. I'm not going to even mention it. And we thought this was love in the Most High. But love is action. And I know it's probably for some of the uh, some of my actual elders and some of us who are getting older. We you come to understand this more and more, you know, the older you get. You know, it's not like in, in high school when you told your girlfriend, like, oh, I love you, baby, and this and that, and you, and you just felt a rush from hearing the words. It's like, oh, my God, he said he – I'm not saying dealing with that. <laughs> he said, these people praise me with their tongues, but their hearts are far from me. You don't, you don't care what you say. He wants to see what you're going to do. Said, but love, the, love the Lord thy God of all thy heart, mind, and soul. First John chapter five and three. And I hope someone brings the scripture up every night. It should be brought up every night. <laughs> First John chapter five verse three. For this is the love of the Most High, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Where are the commandments? Commandments, I believe, well, they're the whole Bible. So we should probably keep the whole Bible, everything that it says, everything that it's told us to do. All these are divine precepts, divine commandments, laws. They're the right thing to do. They're good judgments. No one can tell you that by you figuring out when the Sabbath is or by you not eating pork, shrimp, crab, or lobster, that that's a bad thing. But you can show them through the precepts that the Most High said that them eating pork, shrimp, crab, or lobster, or that them going to uh, church on a Sunday, or observing this uh, this heathen custom, this vain custom of Christmas in Jeremiah 10, are bad things. But you can only get that understanding through the precept. Remember these things, people. Let's go to uh, the book of Genesis. We're going to go back. We're going to go way back. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 26, verse 5. Once again, that's the book of Genesis, chapter 26, verse 5. Genesis, chapter 26, verse 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Mm, I thought Moses gave us the law. It says, Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. These things have always been in place. He, The Christian creed is... Well, Moses' law is done away with. It wasn't Moses' law. It was the Most High's law. And he's been telling people since the beginning. There was a law in the garden. Don't eat from the tree. We couldn't even do that. So we had to make more laws. (laughs) It's always been a law. There will always be a law. But you only understand that through the precepts. Let's go over to book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. And we're going to read verses 1, and we're going to read verses 15. Because I want to make sure we read from the law. We're supposed to do that on the Sabbath. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Most High thy power to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Most High thy power will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. How can anyone say that following the law is a bad thing? 
or that we don't have real faith if we're trying to follow the law. The Most High just promised to set us above everyone, the people who follow the law, specifically this nation. So how dare they try to steal this promise from you? The Most High is bound by his word. He said this. He said, if you hearken to all this stuff, you will be the kings. You will be the queens, the judges, the priests, the princes, the princesses. I mean, they've told me, I mean, they basically told me the most I is not going to do this anymore. If if I follow all these laws, I'm the one who's going to go to hell. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, I'm trying to do what the Most High wants me to do. Oh, you must be in a cult. You following the devil, following the Most High's law. What's wrong with you? Does that even sound right? This is what the Most High say to those people who's telling us not to follow the law. Read 15. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Most High thy power to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Oh, that sounds like thy favorite scripture. Oh, cursed is every man who doesn't continue all things written in the law. So we probably should just leave it all alone. Let's not follow it at all. So that way we don't have to worry about not following certain things and break. They, don't even, they probably don't even know this precept exists. Most High ain't joking around, bound by his word, just like I just said. So will we break these laws? Curses. Overtake. Overtaking is like if you were running from someone, right, they're faster than you. It's in a race, right, and they, they pass you. They were behind you. They're coming up, and they're coming up, and they got you, and now they, they're just completely on top of you. It's inescapable. <laughs> Most of no joke. You got to get his precepts so you can have understanding and hate all these false ways. <laughs> Let's go to the book of Mark, or Slack, yeah, the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 17. Once again, it's the book of Matthew, chapter 19. Verse 17. Matthew chapter 19, verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Oh, this is how we get life. Read that last part again. Or Slocky, but, read from Slocky. Read, start at 16. All right. This is uh, Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? How do I live forever? This is what everyone wants to do, right? This is why Christians up in the church every Sunday bow down to their cross, doing Christmas, Easter, all right, and all this other madness. Because they want to have eternal life through their Lord and Savior. Well, what do their Lord and Savior say you have to do to, to enter into life? Continue. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. What commandments could he possibly be talking about? Because all he had was the Old Testament, right? Like I discussed earlier, he wasn't, no, he wasn't reading the book of Matthew. Yeshua wasn't reading the book of John. Yeshua wasn't reading the book of Galatians. Yeshua wasn't reading Revelations. <laughs> He's reading Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Psalms, Proverbs. That's what Yeshua was reading. That's what Yeshia was teaching the people. 
So what is this madness where we're throwing away everything that Yeshaya was teaching? I don't understand it. I really don't. Let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 7. Once again, that's the book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 7. I hope y'all are getting how much this law means to us. It's everything. Faith in Yeshua and, and following the commandments of the Most High. Yeshua said, Mark. keep the commandments. Oh, excuse me. All right. Yeshua said, keep the commandments so we can get eternal life. I, I think that's what we should do. That's the New Testament. Go ahead. Mark chapter 7, verse 7. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Uh, I'm going to get this word doctrine for you guys real quick so you guys understand the word doctrine. I think a lot of people don't um, don't understand what this is. Right? It's, a, it's an instruction, all right? Learning or teaching. It's the function or the information. And it's from the Greek word uh, 1319. Doctrine is assumed to be true. And so when you teach about the Most High's divine precepts, all right, which are incorruptible, which are right, which are the truth, which are the light, all right? John 8, 32 says, you should know the truth, the truth will set you free. If you guys read later, Psalms 119, it says that thy law is the truth. But you can only get that one through the precepts. I'm just saying. <laughs> and so they're out here teaching the doctrine of Christ by the commandments, or another word is precepts, of men. They're apt to start philosophizing and quoting scriptures that are not in the book. I've seen it. That's why it's important you ask, what scripture is that? Please show me. If it's in the Bible, I'll follow it. If you can show me Christmas to follow it in this Bible, I will I will I will erect a Christmas tree in my house and I will adorn it. It would be the, the baddest looking tree with three stars on top. But we know they can't. That's one of their doctrines. The book of Jeremiah says, inform, or, pray the inquire of the former times. Because they, they ain't even willing to study. They're just listening to what some man says. And don't y'all make this mistake. Don't you guys make the mistake of just listening to what anyone that you guys hear teaching you over this conference line is teaching you. Because when you get before the throne, the most high ain't having old Nashad said or or Batak said or Elder Gabar said. He's going to ask you, well, didn't you study? Oh, wait, didn't you read that book? It's called 4,000 Years of Christmas. Yeshia was there only about 2,000 years before you was on, on the earth. Oh, you didn't find that one. It's out there. He's the one we got to be approved to. So don't y'all make that mistake. Everything I'm saying on this phone, anyone saying on this phone, you better test the spirit by the spirit and see whether it be of the most high. And you do that by lining it up with the precepts and the commandments. <laughs> it's the only way. We're almost done, people. Let's go to the book of Mark. We're going to go to chapter 12, verse 29. Once again, it's the book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 29. Mark, chapter 12, verse 29. And Yeshia answered him, the first of, the, of all the commandments is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. 
Shemai, Yasha Allah, Ahaya, Allah, Haya, Nao, Ahaya, Akkad. Hear, O Israel, Ahaya, our power is one power. He's got one set of rules. He's not changing them. Read verse 30. And thou shalt love the Most High thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. This is how you enter life. Just to show you guys, the Bible will be repeating itself. For a reason, through repetition comes learning. The Most High knew he couldn't just write it down one time. I mean, could you imagine having to learn everything and it's just only written once with no, with no testimonies from two or three witnesses? We, we'd be lost hopelessly. Well, because we have precepts, because everything's established by two or three witnesses, we're able to prove all things and know the right way and hate every false way. Let's go to the book of John, chapter 14. Verse 15. Because we're supposed to love the Most High, we're supposed to keep His commandments, and we're supposed to do His will. John chapter 14, verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Hmm. That's Yeshia. Yeshia said, if you enter into life, keep God's commandments. All right? I mean, I, I, we read it over it twice already. Keep saying it. The first and great commandment. That's a precept, though. That's a divine edict, a divine commandment. It can't be avoided. This is, and that's the will of the Father. That we that we hear the, his son and believe in him. And part of belief isn't just knowing, it's doing. I believe I, I believe I mentioned that in one of my previous lessons. You guys have to go back and find it. But believing in our heart and confessing with our mouths is not enough. We have to do. Let's go, to, uh, go down to verse 21. Mm-hmm. Verse 21, he that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. And so when we start keeping the commandments, Yeshua shows up to save the day. He's with you all way. <laughs> And the Father right there with them, backing you up because you're keeping the commandments. That's how precious they should be to you. Really, you have to love these commandments because by loving these commandments and doing these commandments, you stay connected with the most powerful force in our universe. Ahaya Ashar Ahaya and his son Yeshaya and the Rawak. These are the forces that crafted everything that you see around us. I want them on my team. And this is the only way we can love them. He's saying it over and over again. I hope you guys aren't missing this. I really I really hope you're not missing it. Let's go to Revelation chapter uh chapter twelve, verse seventeen. Because with keeping the commandments, there's, um, I'm not going to call it a problem, but there's going to be uh, something coming at us. And then it's Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of the Most High and have the testimony of Yeshua Christ. The devil do not care about these Christians who have the testimony of Christ. 
because they are not keeping the commandments. He has directed missiles, fiery darts, demons, specters, tribulations, fires, persecutions directly at law keepers who have faith in Yeshia. He don't care about those law keepers who want to deny the New Testament. He don't leave them alone. He don't leave them right there on the side of the street, cussing everybody out, this and that, talking about uh, Paul as a false apostle and all this madness. He gonna leave them alone. They gonna be prosperous. But it's us that keep these commandments and have faith in, in the most uh, and have faith in Yeshua. We're gonna be the ones under attack. We're gonna struggle. We're gonna be trodden down at times. I'm saying that because I know a lot of people come into this truth and they think it's just going to be all hunky-dory, peaches and roses. No. You put a huge target on your back. That's why it's important before we baptize people that we teach them. You know, I know a lot of people, get in the, they figure out the truth. I was the same way. I mean, I figured out uh, what the truth was and that I need to be baptized and, uh, I, mean, I was just looking for some water just to get in and just get, and get dunked down in. But I didn't really have any understanding <laughs> of what that was really going to mean. And I think the most high that before I did get baptized in the name of Ahia Ba'i Yeshem Yeshire Wawa Walk, but I understood that I was going to be under attack because I know people who are baptized at the same time as me who didn't have that understanding. And the world's you know, but because they knew they were supposed to keep the commandments and they knew and they had the testimony of Christ, because they, they knew these two core things, they, the world is swallowing them up right now. And it makes me sad because they, they weren't taught. I mean, this person I'm talking about, he kind of like snuck in and got baptized, which we ain't allowing that no more because we're not having nobody's blood on our hands. But you can take solace because the Most High has commanded something. <laughs> Let's go to the book of Joshua, chapter 23, verse 6. Once again, that's the book of Joshua, chapter 23, and verse 6. Joshua, chapter 23, verse 6. Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left. This is be courageous. This is actually not the one I want. It's locked yet. Um, I have to find it. It's another scripture in Joshua. It says, um, have I not commanded thee to be courageous? All right, this is something the Most High has commanded us. It's going to take courage to stand for this truth. All right, it's going to take courage to, to be ridiculed and persecuted by your family. Stick it out. Stick it out. Be courageous. No, no, no. Being courageous doesn't mean that you you fight every battle. All right, it just means that you... Slack <clears throat> you. It just means that you stand through anything, you know, whether it be, you know, your mother, you know, getting on your case because you don't want to celebrate a holiday, or it be your spouse, you know, because the devil has jumped in them to attack you, whatever it may be, be courageous. Stick to everything that's written in the book of Moses which is Genesis to Deuteronomy. If you stick to all those things and you follow all those things in there, the Most High is going to give you right to the tree of life. If you have faith in the Son, Yeshua as well. <laughs> Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 13. We just got a couple more scriptures we're going to go over. Once again, it's the book of Romans, chapter 2, 
verse 13. Romans chapter 2, verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before the Most High, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Read it again. For not the hearers of the law are just before the Most High, but the doers of the law shall be justified. The doers. The doers. All right. The law justifies no man. Let me make that very clear. It's faith in the sacrifice that Yeshua has made for us. But if we do not do the law, his sacrifice becomes void. For if we willfully sin after we've come to the knowledge of the truth, there remain no more sacrifice. This is the here little, there little. This is a precept right here. This is a law. This is a commandment right here. And it links up to that other scripture, which I just quoted. So understand these things. You only understand them if you understand what Moses is talking about, though. Those good judgments, those right things. This is one of my favorite scriptures. It's condemning, too. It, it gets me all the time. You ever feeling like you're not doing the right thing, come to the scripture. Come to the scripture and go and read the law. I mean, we all have faith in Yeshia. I pray the most high that we, everyone on the phone does. But remember, there's something we have to do. Let's go to uh, the book of Romans, chapter 10. I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. Once again, it's the book of Romans, chapter 10. I'm going to start at verse 1. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to the Most High for Israel is that they might be saved. Continue. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of the Most High, but not according to knowledge. This word, uh, knowledge, right? I'm going to read it to you in the Greek. It says, full discernment or acknowledgement. There's something that these people are not discerning because they don't understand the precept. They're not willing to acknowledge what Moses say. And the next scripture explains that. Read. Verse 3. For they being ignorant of the Most High's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of the Most High. If you read the precepts in Psalms 119, you'll find out what the righteousness of the Most High is. I pray everyone reads that chapter. Really. It's um, I believe it's the longest, longest chapter in the Bible. But if you read that chapter, you'll have an understanding of how important the law actually is. We're gonna go to the last scripture of the night. It's gonna be Proverbs, chapter twenty-nine, verse eighteen. Once again, it's the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 18. Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Blessed are your eyes that you see. Blessed are your ears that you hear. Blessed are you that you discern the precepts and the commandments. 
and be happy with that. Don't let anyone take that from you. Not your mother, not your father, not your brother, not your sister, not your wife, not your children, not your boss, not anyone. Not your bank account, not your, not your wallet, nothing. Be happy with keeping the precepts and commandments of the Most High. I mean, you don't have to defend the Most High's word to anyone. Everyone should already know what's going on. There's laws of nature. There's a law that says the sun's going to come up every morning. That's why it says that it's evident by the things that we see that the unseen exists. The laws are all around us. So if the other people understand, let them be in their blindness. Warn them. If they don't want to hear it, let them go. Be happy that you understand. Because narrow is the way to life, and very few who find it. I think we read the other night uh, in the book of Second Ezra, all right? This world is made for many, but the world to come is made for but a few. So be happy, most high willing, that you have the opportunity, because I'm not going to say – I'm not, I'm not going to say that any of us have made it yet. We have to endure it to the end. But at least you have the opportunity. <laughs> at least you're in the right knowledge <laughs> to have opportunity to get to that tree of life. Well, with that family, I'm going to say shalom. Ahayah ba Yishem Yishayah, Barak Atham. I pray the Most High through the Holy Spirit, give you guys edification, understanding. The title of this lesson again is The Precepts and the commandments.